fashion accessories and trims unit 2 module 4 decorative trims hello welcome to the module 4 of unit 2 on fashion accessories and trims this unit is all about decorative fashion trims in this unit we will list the various decorative trims like ribbons tapes patches that are used in the fashion industry in unit 1 we have seen an introduction into the basics of fashion accessories and trims the components or materials except the main fabric used in the production of garments or accessories like bags are called trims they include sewing thread button zipper velcro label shoulder pad linings interlinings tapes etc in this particular unit we will understand decorative trims like lace borders ribbons pom-pom frills ruffles and decorative patches and embellishments we will discuss the need and application of these trims we will learn to identify different types of laces and ribbons we will also come to know about different kinds of embellishments and patches that are available in the market but before we move on I would like to do a small recap of the categories of fashion trims that we have studied in the previous modules trims are used to enhance either the looks or functionality of a garment or accessory decorative trims like embroidery printing appliques enhance the visual appearance of a garment while functional trims like buttons labels and zippers serve a functional purpose in unit 1 we have discussed the different categories of fashion trims used in production trims that are used in the making of apparel or accessories can be divided into sewing trims finishing trims packing trims and decorating trims we have identified each of the first three categories of trims and discussed them in detail in the last three modules of this unit in unit 4 we take a trip back to sewing trims and then discuss trims of decorative value that are added to the apparel or accessory or even sometimes jewelry during the production process decorative trims decorative trims are sewing trims that have an ornamental value they are used to add value to a garment or accessory they are chosen according to the aesthetics of the design the brand and the fashion trends of the period at this juncture i would like to introduce to you a new terminology Passementerie. Passementerie is a French art of making elaborate trimmings or edgings. In French, these are known as passements. They can be applied braids, gold or silver cord, embroidery and colored beads used for clothing and furnishings. Passementerie traditionally worked as a guild. An artisan upon joining the guild would typically work between five to seven years before they can create or design on their own. Styles of passementery include lace, tassel, fringes, ornamental cords, pom-poms and rosettes. Tassels, pom-poms and rosettes are known as point ornaments or non-linear ornaments and others such as ribbons and tapes are known as linear ornaments because of their linear structure. Passimentary 
with clothing for a long time was reserved for elites as a sign of social distinction. It was used exclusively by the royalty and aristocracy or important religious and military leaders. Since then, owing to the simplification of clothing in modern times, passementary guilds became obsolete. Now that I have given you a little bit of a historical background to trims, I would like to explain in detail various linear decorative trims and non-linear decorative trims available in the market. Now tell me, which is the simplest linear decorative trim that you have come across in your life? Well, you are right. I am going to be talking about ribbons, laces and tapes first. Did you know that the word ribbon comes from a Middle English word called ribbon or ribbon or the old French word ruben, which could probably be of a Germanic origin. A ribbon is a narrow loom woven strip of fabric, while ribbons typically refer to fabric ribbons. The word can also refer to a plastic or a metal ribbon, which are essentially strips of a particular material. Fabric ribbons are primarily used for decorative binding, for applique and sometimes for tying. Cloth ribbons or fabric ribbons are, can be made of natural materials like silk, cotton and jute or synthetic materials like polyester nylon and polypropylene. Some popular fabrics used to make ribbons are satin, organza, sheer, silk velvet and grass grain. Ribbons are available in the market in different sizes. Starting from 1 16th of an inch to 3 inches, ribbons of various sizes are used in the fashion industry. Here you can see ribbons from half an inch to nearly 2.5 inches. Now these ribbons are chosen owing to the place where they are used in the apparel or the accessory and to the function that they have to perform. For instance, smaller tapes can be used for edging. Larger tapes can be used as panels or slots or patches. They can also be folded and used as binding. Today, there is an abundance of ribbon that is available in the market. If you walk into a trim supply store in your city, you can come across a wide variety of ribbons. They could be printed, they could be woven, they could be embroidered. For instance, if you walk through Kinari Bazaar Market in Old Delhi, you will come across shop upon shop of those selling sewing trims. The same can be said of Mint Street in Chennai. But do you know how old the concept of using ribbon in the fashion industry is? Well, let me tell you the stories surrounding the history and evolution of ribbons, particularly in the West. Archaeologists have found evidence of narrow, dense, often utilitarian strips of fabric during the Neolithic period. Impressions of warp faced plain weave bands dating back to 6000 BC were excavated from a Turkish archaeological site of Katal Hayuk. The modern ribbon with selvages, that is finished edges, came into being by 
1500. Ribbons were so identified with luxury that during the 16th century AD, the English parliament tried to make the wearing of ribbons a right only of nobility. They were also identified with certain orders of merit. The knights of the garter wore blue sashes. The knights of the bath wore red. Now this makes me question, is this probably the origin of giving first prize ribbons in blue and second prize ribbons in red? Interesting to note, isn't it? In the beginning of 17th century AD, both men and women's clothing was extravagant. Every accessory from gloves to bonnets was festooned with ribbons in many forms. While men's clothing slowly became somber, women's clothing continued to flourish and so did the ribbon trade. Women used to wear a triangular piece of garment called stomacher and stomacher trims used to close in front of the dress had horizontal rows of large bows down the front. Bows further decorated the elbows and were often worn around the neck. In 1770, the Dutch engine loom was developed in which six types of ribbon could be produced simultaneously. Thus, by the end of 18th century, dressmakers and millennials began to use ribbons in increasingly large quantities as fashion's focus turned to trimming of dresses and hats. If you look at portraits of queens like Mary Antoinette, or those of that of Madame Pompadour, you would see them wearing beautiful Rococo gowns trimmed with ribbons and bows. Apart from that, they would also be wearing ribbons at their neck and ribbons on their hair. In 17th and 18th century, detachable sleeves called engagians were used. These were sleeves that could be removed and washed. Majority of these sleeves were attached to the garment using cords and strings. To cover up these joints, bows and ribbons were used. In the 19th century, however, during the Napoleonic Wars, the ribbon industry suffered a major decline because skilled weavers were recruited for military service. With the supply restricted, the demand for ribbon was greater than ever and ribbons became a popular cargo for smugglers. The next ribbon boom occurred in 1813 when pico-edged ribbon became a fashion must-have. Death at the court of Europe stimulated the need for black ribbon. Military tapes, jacquards and metal ribbons became symbols of military regiments and highest awards a nation could bestow. For most of the 19th century, bonnets were the headgear of choice in styles that varied from plain to heavily ornamented with ribbons and with frills. The 20th century continued to see use of ribbon in apparel, particularly in the booming kids wear segment. Frocks for girls were adorned with ribbons. However, with the passage of time, ribbons have become relegated to crafts and home furnishing, moving away from apparel and accessories. Ribbons woven on a loom are rarely produced today. Instead, Cut-edge or fused ribbons are more common. Thermoplastic fibers woven in satin or plain weave taffeta are slit in the desired width with a heat cutting tool that fuses 
and seals the edges of a ribbon. These ribbons are a far cousin to the luxurious silk, silver and gold ribbons of the 17th century. Now coming to India. In India, we have always used strips of fabric for tying and for ornamenting. Today, more than ribbons, woven, printed, embroidered borders and gota are used to embellish garments. Even today in our country, the status and the wealth of a wearer of a garment is judged by the thickness of the border and the work on it. Now many of you would have seen sports people, particularly cricketers, wearing small ribbons on their t-shirt as they go out to play. You would have also heard of certain months being devoted to certain causes. And in that particular month, you will see people wearing ribbons of particular colors. What are they? These are called awareness ribbons. They are ribbons for a cause. The symbolic use of ribbons increased towards the end of 20th century. Wearing of a small colored ribbon pinned to one's clothing came to indicate a sympathy towards the cause. In 1990, the art activism group Visual Aids introduced the custom of wearing a small loop of red ribbon as the international symbol of AIDS awareness. A small pink bow is indicative of awareness and support of breast cancer research. Today, there are different color ribbons for different awareness programs and causes. Moving on, let us look at the categorization of ribbons laces and tapes. How can they be categorized? These ribbons and tapes can be categorized based on material, based on print or design, that is it could be a striped ribbon or a pole cord dotted ribbon, it could be based on the edge finishing, it could be a cut edge, a oven edge or a wired edge. Types of ribbons based on material. Now that we have seen uh, the history and evolution of ribbons, it's time to move on to the types of ribbons based on materials. The first type of ribbon that all of you might be aware of is satin ribbon. A ribbon produced with a satin weave is called a satin ribbon. You will often see it being sold in stores in rolls like this. You get it in different sizes from 1 16th of an inch to 2 or 2 and a half inches. Now satin ribbons can be single faced or double faced. While most satin ribbons that we see in the market are single faced, that is you can see the satin weave only on one side and the back is apparent. You also get double faced satin such as this. Here you can see the satin face on both the front and back of the ribbon. What is interesting about ribbons such as this is that both the front and the back can be used. You can do decorative work like twisting and sewing the ribbon where in one part the front and the other part the back can be seen. This one is very apparent because the front is black and the back is light grey to white. But in some colors they might be very close to each other. For instance 
the front might be orange and the back might be yellow. Satin ribbons come in a variety of colors, designs, edges and surface patterns. For instance, this is a plain edge. The double face satin that I showed you has a spotted edge. While in India, satin ribbons are the most common type of ribbon. In the West, gross grain ribbon takes its place. In gross grain fabric, the weft is heavier than the bar, creating prominent transverse ribs. As a ribbon, this makes the gross grain stronger and more durable than all other types of ribbons. Gross grain ribbons are popular in creating ribbon decorations for hats. They can also be found as lanyards and watch bands. You can see that gross grain ribbons are also available in a variety of sizes. They can also be created in different finishes. This, for instance, is a very shiny gross grain ribbon. Now, gross grain can be produced in silk, cotton and as well as blends. The next category of ribbon that we are going to talk about is taffeta and more. Taffeta, as many of you know, is a type of silk. It can be today made on pure silk as well as on acetate. Moir is a finish on either taffeta, organza or gross grain ribbon. The ribbon that you see here is a beautiful shaded ribbon that has a moir finish. What is moir? Moir is a type of post-processing on a fabric. It gives a shimmery, watery look and it can be recognized by this type of finish. Usually, moir ribbons come with a thin reinforced edge such as this. Sheer organza. Made of silk or polyester organza, sheer organza ribbons are priced for their sheer translucent quality. Now, for a beginner, both moir ribbons and organza ribbons might look the same. However, an organza ribbon is shiny, just like the organza fabric, whereas moir is just a watery, shimmery sort of a finish. You can see when you put it against your hand, in the presence of light, you can see a clear difference between both ribbons. The next ribbon is slightly rarer and it's called velvet flocked or lame ribbon. Velvet ribbon has a soft pile usually on one face only and can be printed such as this. You can see on the back that it has no felting, that is no piling. Velvet ribbons under this generic category can also be flocked, can also be a weave like brasso. Velvet ribbons are commonly used in wrapping of gifts, particularly during Christmas. They are also applied on the surface of garments. This gives a luxurious feeling to the garment. The next category is of natural materials. Hemp, jute and burlap. Natural fiber ribbons include a whole range of cotton tapes, jute tapes, burlap and linen tapes. These are used in apparel and accessories where a rustic, shabby chic or vintage look is required. They are also used in a lot of home decor crafts, card making and gift wrapping. The 
The next is a very interesting category of ribbon called sari ribbon. Yes, you heard it right. These are torn or cut strips of old silk saris recycled into ribbons. You might have come across people selling their old saris in exchange for new saris. In these places, the zari is often taken separately. It's melted and sold for its silver quality. The silk fabrics are often tossed in a heap. This particular ribbon industry is an upcycling and recycling industry. They buy saris from these vendors, cut them up into ribbons. They sew the edges or they overlock the edges and they sell them abroad. Though these are made from Indian saris, sari ribbon is not commercially available in India. In the beginning, only silk saris of good quality, that is recycled material was used and sold as sari ribbon. However, owing to the popularity of sari ribbon in America, today the market is flooded with ribbons in polyester and cotton blends under the same sari ribbon category. Shibori ribbon. Not to be confused with a tie and dye technique called shibori. Shibori ribbon is a silk ribbon created by twisting, folding, stitching and binding silk ribbon or fabric during the process of dyeing to create a variety of pleated, vibrantly colored piece of silk or satin. The key word to note here is the pleat. Almost like a plissé finish, these ribbons are often pleated. They can be opened out or closed and gathered to create a wide variety of embroidery and embellishments. Shibori ribbon is used in making of accessories like wrist cuffs and go on as decorative patches on bags. Tulle ribbon. Tulle ribbon is a thin strip of tulle fabric. Tulle is a thin, fine, machine-made net of acetate, nylon, rayon or silk. Tulle fabric is commonly used in western bridal garments and in ballet dance costumes. Tulle lends a very soft and feminine feeling to the product that it's being used on. Lace. The next category that we are going to talk about is lace. Lace fabric is fine, delicate and woven from a variety of fibers. Lace refers to an open fabric that is created by looping, twisting or knitting threads in a specific pattern. Traditionally made by hand, lace ribbons today can be machine produced. Generally, lace trims or lace ribbons such as this are used in the decoration and trimming of garments. Lace ribbons are also available with two finished edges. The ribbons that I have here have only single finished edge and on the other side they do have an open lace work or open cut work. However, lace trims that are finished on both sides are also available in the market. There are many different tape types of laces that are available including guipur, needle, bobbin, rochelle, cut work, crochet, knitted and tatted lace. These ribbons have an open structure and need to be machine sewn with small stitches in order to fix them appropriately to your garment. Lace such as this with scalloped edges can be used as edging, not just for garments but also for accessories and home furnishings like curtains and pillow covers.
the next type of ribbon that we are going to talk about comes under the category of mesh these are wide or narrow synthetic decorative poly based netting they can also be known under different trade names such as deco poly mesh geo mesh synthetic cyname mesh netting vinyl mesh art mesh floral wrap and other trade names they may come in metallic and non metallic finishes poly mesh can be used to make wreaths garlands bows and wrap packages apart from being made into hat fascinator bases i have here an example of natural cyname cyname is a thin net like fabric that can be dipped in water and shaped to make beautiful hat fascinator bases the synthetic version of cyname is what we just discussed about the next category of ribbon that we are going to discuss are glitter ribbons ribbons that are entirely covered with glitter on one side are called glitter ribbons sometimes glitter ribbons might be satin or gensa or mesh ribbons with glitter print on them glitter ribbons may be wired or unwired wired ribbons are used for wrapping presents and making bows metallic ribbon not to be confused with a glitter ribbon metallic ribbon is made up of a fabric that has a foil or metallic finish on it ribbons with lurex yarns in them such as this are also called metallic ribbons now metallic ribbons could be a plain weave they could be braids they could also be decorative with little sequins embellished or fixed on them now that we have seen very shiny shimmery ribbons it's time to discuss the more subtle ribbons denim ribbon denim ribbon is a kind of ribbon where strips of denim are cut and the edge singed to create a ribbon now they could have an edge finishing such as cutting and singeing or they could also have a woven edge finish elastic ribbons elastic ribbons are ribbons that are elasticated these can be used for smocking or edging purposes here i have with me grass grain ribbons that are elasticated these are usually used around cuff or sleeve finishing they can also be used around the neck to create a gather or a frill effect finally let us discuss paper tapes or paper ribbons though there are several synthetic paper paper ribbons available in the market today i would like to discuss with you printed paper tapes printed paper tapes or washi tapes known by the commonly referred to trade name are tapes that have an adhesive on one side while they cannot be attached to a garment or an accessory they can be used as packaging and finishing trims ribbons such as this they have print on one side so this is an example of a printed glitter paper tape or a glitter washi tape the possibility of printing a multitude of patterns on these tapes is a reason that is used in the packaging of designing designer and handmade products we looked at different materials in the packaging section as packaging trims this is one such decorative supply that is being widely used in custom packaging
finally wired ribbons ribbons can have cut edge woven edge singed edge or wired edge wired edge ribbons are those ribbons that are cut from broad strips of cloth and their edges are wrapped over thin wire though sometimes the wire can be woven into the fabric along the edges or down the middle wire mesh can also be woven to make ribbon with or without the addition of yarns for color wire edge ribbon is versatile because the wire allows it to hold a definitive shape you can easily make flowers and bows out of it the only disadvantage here is that the material cannot be washed because washing or in contact with water can lead the wire to rust thereby staining the ribbon as well as the fashion fabric that is used underneath therefore wire ribbons are not suitable for a pair the fashion industry relies on textures that are both visual as well as tactile we like seeing value addition products that have both a visual as well as tactile quality decorative trims suit suit this requirement perfectly so now we are going to look at types of ribbons and categorize them visually based on their print or weave mainly based on their surface pattern we have seen solid ribbons before solid ribbons are plain ribbons are ribbons made of one single color sometimes there can be a gradient of colors they can be in different weaves solid ribbons can be satin ribbon gross grain ribbon twill tapes or cotton tapes the next classification is that of stripe ribbons ribbons can be woven or printed with a variety of stripe patterns these work beautifully as trims across pockets in garments they look creative and interesting when played against various panels these are some more stripe designs of tapes that are available in the market these are woven tapes you can also get tapes that have checks plaids and gingham checks in them you can also get ribbons that have textures in them case in point this particular one over here it is not a stripe but a texture another visual design that many of you might recollect is polka dot the one right here in black and white polka dots in ribbons are very popular in kids wear the next category is that of florals floral florals printed on a tape provide aesthetic value and a section of relief in an otherwise striped or solid garment or accessory they are very whimsical and they are perfect for categories of apparel and accessory that are produced for spring talking about prints we can have any kind of thematic print printed upon your satin ribbon or your twill tape here you can see monkeys playing a game of basketball you can see snowmen here you can also see florals or optical illusion designs these are prints on satin ribbon here you can also see prints on cotton ribbon you can have your brand name or logo printed you can have a texture that is printed or you can have a particular image divided into parts or colorways and printed on your tape 
Finally, we also have Jacquard Ribbon. Jacquard Ribbon was named after the 19th century weaver Joseph Marie Jacquard. The ribbon is unique as in both sides exhibit the same pattern just with an inverse color combination. Jacquard Ribbon's high quality and attractive appearance make it ideal for decorative accents. Here you can see jacquard ribbons with a matte finish and you can here see them with a shiny metallic finish. This metallic finish is brought about by the inclusion of lurex thread or zari yarns. ribbon and tape is often used interchangeably in the fashion industry. Now is there a difference between the two? While some designers agree that both tapes and ribbons form almost the same functions, there are those experts that argue that they are very different from each other. Ribbons, they say, are more for aesthetic purposes, whereas tapes can also have a functional feature. For instance, a twill tape or a piping tape or a cord. Now, how do we classify them? It depends upon, again, the designer, the industry and the product. It even depends upon the location and the kind of vocabulary that is used at a particular production plant. Moving on, let us take a look at different types of borders, laces and tapes. This list the different types of borders, 
laces and tapes that are available in the market. This classification is not done only according to material but also their construction and the way in which they are used. Beginning with rickrack. Rickrack that is R-I-C-K-R-A-C-K -K, or R-I-C hyphen R-A-C is a flat narrow braid woven in zigzag. It is typically used to provide a finished edge to a fabric when these processes were not available. Nowadays, it is used as an applique rather than as an edge finish. There are three basic types of rickrack available, cotton, polyester and nylon. Twill tape. A twill tape is a woven cotton or linen ribbon. It may be made up of a twill or a herringbone weave. It can be used to reinforce seams, make casings or tie closing garments and accessories like bags together. You can see that twill tape today has moved past the standard twill or the herringbone weave and other textures are also commonly used. Sometimes twill tapes are layered with gross grain ribbon or printed ribbon in order to produce a three-dimensional effect. Twill tips are mostly available as ready-to-dye material which means that they can be DTM that is dyed to match your apparel or accessory. Woven or embroidered borders. These are ribbons typically attached as borders on Indian garments like skirts, saris, kurtas or blouses. They can be woven with or without sari. This is an example of an oven zari ribbon. They can be embroidered or embellished. This is an example of machine embroidered and embellished tape. That is, it has couching embroidery and sequence work done on it. This tape is another example of machine embroidery created to resemble mirror work or kutch work. You can also see open borders such as this being embellished or ornamented by hand with beads and sequins. These borders are available in a variety of sizes ranging from 3 fourth of an inch to 3 to 4 inches. is not something that you will find in the West. Gota or Gota Patti. Gota is a metallic ribbon typically found in gold, bronze, silver and copper colors. It is popular in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. It has a twill weave or a satin weave if it is plain with a solid color base like orange or white. This particular one is made up of a white base. It is typically folded in triangles such as this and to create bunting style laces. Gota is also used to create floral appliques for clothing, especially those meant for bridal and party wear. Wider ribbons can be gathered or heat set with pleats to create small circles. on sequin trim. A sequin trim is a metallic ribbon or an organza ribbon that is machine embroidered with sequins. Here the sequins can be arranged in an open pattern that is the it can be seen from the back or it can be adhered to the surface of the ribbon. Similarly just like we have sequin ribbons we can also have stone ribbons or rhinestone ribbons where the rhinestone 
is fixed to the surface of the ribbon. Pico ribbon Lined with small twisted loops down the sides, the pico edge of these ribbons lend feathered textures to the ends of fabrics or other materials of accessories on which they are used. Pico tape can be elasticated or non-elasticated. Ruffle trim A ruffle is an ornamental gather or frill of fabric with a stitch that is running down in the center. When you have stitched only on one side, it is called as a frill. A ruffle trim is a pre-made length of ruffles ready to be attached to a garment or accessory. Bias tape Bias tape is a narrow strip of fabric cut on bias that is 45 degree angle. The raw edges are folded in and ironed in in commercial bias tapes thereby making it easy to use. You get bias tapes that have a single fold or a double fold on. It is used for making piping, binding seams and finishing raw edges. These kind of finishes are very commonly seen in bags. It is also used on the edges of quilts, placemats or bibs. Sometimes it is also used around the armhole and neckline edges instead of making a facing. It can also be used as a simple strap or a tie-up for purses, bags and very casual clothing. Moving on, let us discuss fringes. Fringe originated as a way of preventing a cut piece of fabric from unraveling when hemming was not used. To create a fringe, several strands of weft threads would be removed and the remaining warp threads would be twisted or braided together to prevent unravelling. Fridged edges on silk sari such as Kanchipuram is an example of this. In ancient costumes of Sumerian and Assyrian period, fringes were important items used for embellishment. In modern fabrics, Fringe is more commonly made separately and then sewn on. Fringe dresses from 1920s jazz age, that is the flapperuk, are iconic of this particular period. types of fringes. They include bullion fringe, twisted yarn which generally contains threads of gold or silver. The name derives from the bullion hose which has a twisted element at the top. Modern bullion fringe varies widely in texture and width but is generally only 3 to 9 inches in length. Campaign fringe Derived from the word campaign, meaning bell, it consists of small bell-like tassels on the end. Thread fringe. These are fringes made by untwisting and unbraiding loose warp threads. Pom-pom fringe. This is an example of a pom-pom fringe. Pom-poms will be covered in detail in the next section. Beaded fringe. A fringe of seed beads strung together instead of plain yarn or thread comes under this category. 
the next type of trims that we are going to discuss is cording. Types of cords include round cord, stitched or unstitched cords. These are example of unstitched cords. These cords include paracords and kumihimo cords. These could be braided or a cotton cord could be encased into a fabric or leather casing. Flat cords are stitched and unstitched cords or tapes. Flat leather stitched cords can commonly be seen as bag handles and as watch straps. The third category is that of braided cords. Braided cords can be flat or again they can be round. Fabric braids can be knitted or woven. Leather and non-leather cords can also be braided. They provide exceptional decorative border treatments for apparel, accessories and home furnishing like curtains and pillow covers. They are also very commonly used in costume jewelry making. Piping. Piping is a type of trim or embellishment consisting of a small strip of folded fabric so as to form a pipe. It is inserted into the seam to define the edges or style lines of a garment or accessory. Usually the fabric strip is cut on bias and folded. It may be made either from a self fabric or a contrasting fabric or other materials like leather. Ready made piping ribbons that is ribbon with a cord at the edge can be used directly for piping. This eliminates the need to cut and prepare fabric in order to create a pipe. You can also see woven ribbons such as this available in Indian markets with a piping cord at the edge. Now, these are double sided piping cord ribbons. They can be applied onto the surface, whereas some will only have a piping cord on one side. These are used to finish sleeves and other hems. Braided tapes and braids. Braids are linear trims that are created by plating or braiding cords of same or different colors in order to create a three-dimensional texture on the tape. Braids or braided tapes such as this are commonly applied as borders to highlight certain sections of the garment. They can be used on sleeve hems and bottom hems. They can also be used as appliques and patches over pockets. Braids are commonly used in garments and accessories that are being inspired by military. Braids can also have sequences fixed on them. These braided tapes or braided ribbons can be used to create a variety of shapes. They can be made into a rosette and fixed as a non-linear trim onto the surface of your garment or your accessory. So far, we have looked at linear decorative trim. Now, we are going to discuss point decorative trims or non-linear decorative trims. Beginning with pom-pom. Pom-pom is a very quirky, fun, kitschy kind of a trim that can be used to make any apparel or accessory interesting and fun. Pom-pom makers are available in the market and can be easily made by everyone. Pom-pom 
is derived from the French word pompon, which refers to a small decorative ball made up of fabric or feathers. It also means an ornamental round tuft. Originally refers to its use on a hat as an ornamented tuft with a tuft like flower head. Pom-poms have always been a part of traditional dress in Scotland. In South America, traditional garments of both men and women are decorated with differently colored pom-poms as a symbol of their marital status. In Rome, clergymen wore square peak caps called berettas. The color of the pom-pom that crowned each beretta signified the wearer's order. During the 18th century, the imposing Hungarian cavalry known as the Hussars wore a tall structured cap called shako as a part of their uniforms. This impressive headgear inspired military headgear with feathered plumage or pom-poms across the world. Pom-pom today, as I mentioned before, is a very fun ornament and trim. Pom-poms on a fringe like this can become linear ornaments that can be used on purses, bags and clothing. It can be edged, it can be used to edge kurtas or t-shirts. The next trim that we are going to discuss is something that all of you would be familiar about. Tassels. A tassel is a dangling ornament made by laying together parallelly a bunch of cords or threads of even length and fastening them at one end. It could be a bell-shaped bunch of plated, beaded or straight threads which are bound together and suspended from another loop. Modern tassels today come without a wood base that gives them the form. Traditionally, tassels that are used in home decor are much heavier. They have a wooden cap and a thread that is wound around them to make them more ornamental. Today, you can see tassels not only of thread but also suede leather which comes with a metallic cap on it. You can also create beaded tassels. Tassels are another fun trim. You can use them on your apparel and accessories like bags, shoes, purses and even belts. Some of these tassels can be made into jewellery. of trim that we are going to discuss is that of applique and patches. Appliques are previously made cut edged trims that can be applied onto an apparel or accessory. Mostly you will identify them with an edge finishing such as this. You can also create your own appliques by cutting pieces of fabric and sewing on them to another piece of fabric or leather using hemming stitches or buttonhole stitches. These are some machine made appliques that I have for you here. Some of them are edged with contrast thread while others with the same color thread. These have been done differently purely for aesthetic functions. These patches can be machine stitched right along the border of the edge. There are also other appliques such as this which are just patches. These patches could be either iron on or sewn in. Iron on patches have 
adhesive at the back. Sewons are much flatter and thinner, enabling them to pass through the needle and the sewing mechanism of a sewing machine. Now patches such as this can either be sewn with by hand or by machine. In India, embroidered rhinestone embellished patches, often called kundan patches, are very very common. These patches are first glued to the surface of the apparel or accessory using fabric glue. Then they are sewn by hand. These, this is an Indian patch of a leaf which could be machine stitched. These kind of fully embroidered patches are created sometimes with or without a backing. In case of a backing, these are water soluble and the backing can be removed by dipping these patches in hot to lukewarm water and removing the paper backing. There are several other kinds of patches that are available in the market. Flat patches or labels such as this can also be sewn on to garments such as trousers or t-shirts. PVC welding patches can also be used. Embroidery patches known as embroidery badges are commonly found on t-shirts. Ornamental patches such as this or 3D patches can be attached to zippers as zipper pulls for an interesting look particularly in kids wear garments. Talking about kids wear, iron on patches such as this are woven laser cut patches. Once backed with a, fu uh, a fusible adhesive at the back, they can be ironed on to the surface. They can also be sewn with a sewing machine. The next category of trims that we are going to discuss are floral trims and rosettes. A rosette is a small circular trim often resembling a flower. In some countries such as Belgium, France, Italy and Japan, rosettes are issued as an honour. The rosettes are either worn on the medal to denote a higher rank or for situations wearing the medal is deemed inappropriate, it is worn as a pin on a suit. In the fashion world, flowers of many shapes, sizes and techniques are applied to garments, accessories and jewellery, mainly for aesthetic reasons. They soften the look and make the product appear more feminine. You can see several kinds of rosette trims here. 
this is a rosette dangle where the rosette is created by laying down braided cords. This is a silk flower rosette created by cutting, singeing and layering circles of silk to create a flower. This is a crochet flower that is used on a crochet belt. I would like to show you another trim today. This is called as a rosette ribbon. It looks to be an ordinary flat ribbon when you first look at it. But it's a very interesting trim. As you see, it comes with a thread on one side. By carefully pulling this thread, you gather the ribbon, thereby creating a flower or rosette in the process. Now, once gathered, the flower could be turned and arranged, creating a rosette that has to be sewn onto a base. You can gather as much as you want, depending on how closed or how open you want the flower to be. Sewing the gathers as you go is the best way to make sure that the ribbon does not unravel, thereby losing your rosette in the process. shiny disc with one or two punched holes that can be used to embellish a garment or an accessory. Though they are usually sewn, they can also be attached through gluing and sometimes through heat bonding like hot fix sequins. Sequins typically have a center hole while spangles have a hole located only on the top. Pilots are very commonly large and flat. Beads on the other hand are small three-dimensional objects found commonly in the shape of round, oval and square. They can be sewn separately onto the surface of the product. Small beaded trims such as these can also be wired and applied once the garment has been made in the finishing stage. The more embellishments like rosettes, sequins and beads you use, the durability of the garment changes. It has to be taken care of properly. You cannot wash these garments in washing machines. They have to be hand washed or spot cleaned. A lot of embroidered or embellished garments cannot be dry cleaned. It is best to refer to the care label that is given by the manufacturer when handling products that are embellished. The next category is that of stones, studs, and spikes. You might have seen denim jackets with studs on them. Apparel and accessories that come under the subcultures of punk and goth have a lot of spikes that have been embellished on the surface. These are small metallic and non-metallic embellishments that can either be sewn, glued or fixed with heat on the surface of the product. Some studs like brads have prongs on the underside that can be set by folding them over a textile surface. Stones and studs with flat backs such as this 
flat rhinestones can be attached by themselves by sewing or gluing while certain other trims where the stones are pointed need to be set in casings mirrors can also be created onto similar trims with a backing so that they can be securely attached either by gluing or hand sewing on a particular surface with this list of non linear trims we come to the end of this module to recap here is a summary of what we discussed decorative trims are sewing trims attached to the apparel accessory or jewelry during its making process which in garments means sewing they are used to increase the value and the aesthetic appeal of the product decorative trims may be linear like ribbons and tapes or non linear like pom poms and rosettes whatever they are they are decided by the designer or the brand taking into account the look and feel that they want for a product we shall discuss this fashion and trend criteria for selection of trims in the upcoming module fashion accessories and trims unit 2 module 5 criteria for selection of trims hello and welcome to the module 5 of unit 2 the chapter in which we discuss fashion trends in this module 5 of the second unit we will discuss the criteria for selection of fashion trends we will elaborate upon how we select a particular trim for a design introduction fashion trims are used to increase a product's appeal it can be used for product differentiation or to align with a fashion trend it could be according to the theme of the collection or the mood or based on the inspiration trims can be structurally or superficially incorporated into a fashion product their placement and stage of application also depends upon the design and the need of the particular product in this module we will elaborate upon the criteria of so selection of trims i will talk to you about the planning that is required for trim incorporation based on construction technique usage and aesthetics but before that let us rewind a little bit and recollect the types of trims that are used in the fashion industry first of all what are trims and what are the categories that are there the materials used as trims vary extensively from piece goods to support materials to closures to special purpose fabrication broadly trims can be classified into four types based on their production stages these are sewing trims finishing trims packaging trims and decorative trims to recap the previously studied modules of this unit sewing trims are those trims that are used during the sewing of the garment or the accessory these could include closure items like zipper or structure providing items like interfacing or interlining it could also include decorative patches ribbons or tapes the main brand label that is attached to the product for primary branding and main wash care labels that is sewn into the garment all come under this category finishing trims are those trims that are used during the finishing of a garment or an accessory 
in this closure items such as buttons, hooks and structure providing items like wires and stays come in. Packing trims are those trims that are used during the packaging of a finished garment or an accessory. These could include items like tags, boxes, tissue papers, bell pins, butterfly collar stays, promotional materials such as lookbook images, coupons, greeting cards, handwritten notes. These all come under the category of packing trims as well. Decorative trims are those that increase the aesthetic value of the product. These include items such as ribbons, tapes, patches. They are usually attached prior to sewing or during the sewing process. Trims can also be categorized into four types based on their construction. The first category is of bindings. Bindings are functional trims used to finish the edge of a garment like finishing of a neckline or hem or an armhole opening. The materials used for binding vary depend upon the type of garment and the design requirements. Bias cut, folded, braided or knitted strips are often used for as binding trims. Binding trim should have an inherent flexibility to conform to the garment's contours or in case of an accessory, its tie lines. Thus, stretch and flexibility are properties that we look for in binding trims. Next category is that of edgings. Edgings are used to outline shapes, accentuate style lines or compartmentalize color blocks within a garment or an accessory. As the name suggests, they are applied to edges in garments like hems. They could be trims like tucks, ruffles or piping. Some more tapes are pico, rickrack. These are kind of trims that can be used for edging as well. Lace and ruffles like I discussed in module 4 of this unit are often used as edging trims. The third category of trims are flat trims. These trims are applied on the garment in an ornamental capacity. Braids, tapes, ribbons, embroidery patches, appliques are some of the examples of flat trims used in a garment. The width and the fabrication changes in these trims are used to change their aesthetic appeal. Flat trims are also used to cover seams. They can create a textural or visual appeal and they are also used to conform to fashion trends. For instance, in this particular kurta that I am wearing, a metallic ribbon has been used as a trim in the center of my placket opening. This not only covers up the seam, but it also adds value to this garment as an ethnic kurta. It makes the vertical line more prominent, thereby making me look thinner and taller. Also, because of the color of the trim that is being used, it makes thy neckline look much more grander, thereby making my overall garment and the overall look grander in return. What are the other trims that do not come under these three categories? They include three-dimensional trims like buttons, metal trims like studs, nail heads, sewing trims like rhinestones and then trims like buckles and rivets. These can be clenched or sewn into the garment. These trims often require special equipment, skill and processes to arrange, align and adhere the trim 
to the product that is being produced. These can be decided either based on fashion acceptance or functional requirements, sometimes both. Moving on, we come to the most important part of this module, trim selection. In the past four modules, we have looked at the various possibilities of trims that exist in our markets. Now that we have seen that there are so many of them, it can be confusing. When the time comes to pick your own trims, how do you know if you are selecting the right trim for your product. Come, let us discuss the various criteria for trim selection. Trims can be produced in-house or purchased depending upon the design, the production, costing and availability constraints. Appropriate trim selection is crucial as it allows enhancing both the garment's functionality and appearance. Coming to the different criteria of trim selection, number one is aesthetics. Trims can extensively be used to enhance the aesthetic appeal of a garment. High quality trims can make ordinary garments and accessories look very expensive. However, in some cases, you might have noticed that cheap buttons, laces or zippers may ruin the overall look of the product. Hasn't this happened to you? You might go to a mall wanting to pick up a bag. You might look through shelves upon shelves of bags and pick one that catches your fancy. But upon closer inspection, you see that the zipper is of very poor quality. Alas, you do not buy the bag. This goes on to tell you how important is the quality of trim. We might even compromise on aesthetics at some point, but we should never compromise on the quality of a trim that we are using for a designer product. It should also be understood that some trims have specific appeal to certain market segments. They work on certain products, but they do not work well on others. For instance, trims like laces and ruffles work very well with kids wear and feminine shirts and blouses. It is not to say that the man cannot wear ruffles or frills. It is just that when you are catering to a mass market with a mass produced product, you have to take into account what the majority wants. Also, embroidered trims with beads and sequins might work better on ethnic wear. Of course, there are always exceptions. Many western garments like denim shirts or jeans have embroidery on them. These fall under the category of fusion garments and there exists a specific target market that prefers them. After aesthetics, even if you ask me before that, performance is very important. After aesthetics, if you ask me, even before that, performance of the trims have to be taken into consideration. What is a particular trim for? Is a button only for show? Or is this button going to be used frequently? If so, what is the quality of sewing thread that must be used with a button? For good performance, trims must be compatible with other materials that are used in the product and suited to assembly methods equipment and skill of the operators. Trims should have dimensional stability and compatibility. For instance, 
trims such as bindings and edgings as we discussed before should be flexible. They should have a soft hand and they should be abrasion resistant. In the same vein, let us talk about the practicality of trims. Imagine that you are making a hooded sweatshirt. What sort of a zipper do you want for your hoodie? You will want a zipper that is completely detachable in the end. This will allow your hoodie to be worn as a jacket and zipped up when extra protection, more warmth is required. Here, apart from the aesthetics of the tape on which the zipper teeth are fixed, you also have to look at the strength of the zipper and the strength of the puller. Let us consider another example. Imagine that you want to make a small pouch that goes inside a bigger lady's handbag. How should you choose prints or patterns for the uplick that goes on this purse? Should you choose a print? Should you choose an embroidery? Should you choose beadwork? Or first of all, should you put an applique at all? Though there is no right answer to this question, my preferred answer would be that you do not put an applique at all. Because this pouch is going to go inside a bigger bag. And every time it goes in and comes out, there is going to be a lot of abrasion. It will clash with many other items that are inside the bag. Threads may snag, beads may come out. And after using it a couple of times, the user might find it frustrating. In such a case, a fabric that is printed or woven in the design of your choice, that is plain and does not have any embellishment on top, is most suitable for creating such a small pouch. This leads us to our next point compatibility. The trim that you select must be compatible to the main material. Lightweight trims like thin ribbons, sequins and seed beads work better on lightweight fabrics such as chiffon compared to heavy patches. In sewing trims, we discussed the kind of fusibles and interfacings that must be used with different fabrics. When you use a dark color fusible on a thin light material, chances are that the dark color might be visible from outside. Also, stiff paper interfacings may spoil the fall of the fabric. For application of 3D trims, on soft fabrics or knitted fabrics, backings must be used to stabilize the trim. While creating a new design and selecting trims, it is always wise to do a test run. See if the weight of the trim is compatible with the weight of the fabric or the material that is being used. Are the trims efficient? Is the final look after ap application aesthetically pleasing? Do they seem together with one another? Is there unity? Is there compatibility? These are questions that you must ask yourself as a designer when you choose trims for a particular project. Moving on, construction. Trims must also be selected based on their application or construction. The kind of product will determine whether the trim must be sewn, glued or fixed using heat. The placement of the trim will also determine the stage in the production process in which the trim will be applied. 
For instance, embroidery and applique is done on flat panels in pre-production. Functional trims like zippers and velcro are attached during sewing. Rivets and eyelets are attached during finishing, sometimes even after washing the garment. In case of accessories, it is very important to note the order in which the trims must be placed. This will make sure that your final product is as per your vision, your design. Also, the skill of the operator must be taken into account while you select trims. In case a complex trim is selected, then a suitable operator to manufacture the product with the trim must be identified. If no such operator is available, one must be trained. For instance, excessive setching of a trim may result in uneven application and even distortion. In cases like this, work aids such as folders and guides can be used to facilitate construction. Until this point, we have discussed the technical aspects of trim selection. We have looked at features like performance and compatibility. But in the end, we are talking about the fashion and design industry. So here, apart from technical aspects, aesthetic and visual aspects play a very important role. We need to select trims based on the trend, the season, the category and the consumer. We should also keep in mind the brand and the image of the brand. So the next category or the next criteria is that of season and trend. In unit 1, I have discussed in detail what fashion trends are. Fashion trends are cyclical. They come and they go. You can observe them by media scan, by looking at runway shows, by observing what people around you wear. They are called street trends. You can also observe what influencers are posting on social media. You can also look at what celebrities are wearing. A seasonal trend like fringe or tassel can inspire a whole range of products with that particular trim. If you happen to notice trend forecasts talking about a particular trim, it might be interesting to consider if these trims will suit your design aesthetics and in extension your design. For instance, in fall winter 2018-19 fashion shows, fringed bags are a common trend. Now, if you are a producer making bags in this segment for this particular season, you might want to consider using fringes. Also, tassels have been trend for a while now. Initially, when this trend began, Long tassels of single colors were popular in jewelry. As necklaces and as earrings, tassels were seen not just on runways but also on social media, on the street. Now, this trend has slightly changed. A series of stacked tassels, ombre tassels, tassels with materials of two different textures, are all the changing trends. Moving on, the trend might change even more. Now these in trend cycles are called cycle within cycle. Even though at large the tassel trend as a cycle exists, within it small components, components keep on changing. If you also happen to notice a subculture trend at a particular moment, these can be taken into consideration. If you see a retro trend, then colorful stripe ribbons, polka dots or custom printed ribbons and tapes can be used. If you notice the athleisure trend, then tapes that have 
a distinctive sporty flavor can be used in your accessories and garments. Some trims might be transseasonal. Some of them could be interseasonal. That is, some, se some trims can be used for the period in between seasons. I have discussed four seasons with you before. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Now, in between seasons, you can also decide what kind of trim that you want to use. Probably, you want to work on certain trims that are waterproof for the rainy season. There are also other trims that come under the classic segment. For instance, monograms, a D of a Dior bag, or F for Fendi, P for Prada, the CC for Coco Chanel. Now, these are trims that do not depend on season or trend. They are symbolic of the brand. They convey the brand's identity. So these can be used across seasons. The theme of the collection and inspiration. I just spoke to you about how fringes are in trend in autumn winter 1819 and slowly being followed to SS19. Now let me compare a few designer collections. I am going to take a look at Givenchy's Autumn Winter Collection and Shia Perilis SS19 Collection. In Givenchy's collection, you can see fringes being used in an evening wear dress. It is very luxurious. It talks about Neuer. It's very plush. It is meant for evening wear. It is distinctively a more expensive winter wear collection. On the other hand, if you look at Spring Summer 19, Shia Perilis Couture Collection, the fringes here in lovely colors scream spring. They are bright, they are bold and they are fun. If you compare both these images, you can see that the length of the fringe is very, very different. The material is also different. The way in which it is applied also different. But in the end, essentially, they are both fringes. So what do we understand from this example? A same category of trend can have different variations to suit your requirement. You have to carefully select your trim based on the exact portrayal that you want for your design. Now let us take two more examples that have very sporty looking trims on them. Let me go back to the same collection by Givenchy where the model has a side opening on his top. You can see a striped tie tape here. This tape makes the look more sharp and urban and it also gives it a sporty edge. Compare this to Calvin Klein's summer collection. Calvin Klein's collection has been inspired by workwear, by people on the streets who do construction work, who lay our roads. You can see the orange and silver trim prominently on the jacket. You can see how each of these trims lends a completely different look to the garment. I discussed sequins and spangles while discussing decorative trims. In a collection by Balmain, again, Autumn Winter 2018-19, you can see a lot of spangles being used. They have been used to create a new futuristic kind of a look. They give an impression of a metallic foil surface. If you refer to your forecast, you would see that quantum entanglement with mirror surfaces and reflective surfaces is forecasted for SS19. This forecast is based 
on runway collections of AW 1819. On a close-up of another garment in this collection, you can also see that soft ruffle trims, velvet trims are used in combination with these spangles to soften the look. This gives a seemingly futuristic collection a very feminine feeling. Like this, you can go on and on and discuss trims in the recent collections. Now, there is something that I would like you to do. I would like you to go on the internet and surf Vogue.com. Look at all the seasonal runway collections that are there. Collect at least 5 to 10 pictures where the trim is visible. I want you to analyze the garment in terms of the trim being used. Check the review that is written to understand what is the theme and mood of the collection. Analyze if the trim used contributes to the mood and the theme. Mention whether it contributes positively or negatively to the mood of the collection. Now also compare the trims along with the brand's identity. Is the brand's identity usually quirky? Is it elegant? Is it flamboyant? Is it sporty? If so, how do the trims match up to these benchmarks? I would like you to note all of this in your learning diary. As you learn and continue to do this process, you will understand more about fashion and fashion trims. With this, we come to the end of this module. At this juncture, I would like to give you a suggested activity or an assignment to see what you have learnt through this entire unit. I would like you to create a swatch file. To create a swatch file of trims, you must first visit your markets. Look at trims that are available in different categories. Look for both invisible and visible trims. Collect samples of interlinings, linings, fusings, closure trims, finishing trims and packing trims. You can ask your friends or family for anybody who has made a purchase of a new garment. As they unbox this purchase, they would be discarding the packing trims. Collect these trims from them. Then, I would like you to take A4 sheets of mount board and an A4 file. Glue all these trims or mount them on your sheets and write the appropriate detail. The details that are required for each of the trims are name of the trim, material which makes up the trim, size and price. If you can also mention the name of the source from which you collected it, it would be beneficial to you. I would like you to create trim cards for all the trims that we have discussed in this unit. Once you create your trim cards, put them in A4 files which have plastic covers. This will make sure that your trims stay in their pristine new condition. A creation of such a swatch file would be very helpful to you. It would enable you not only to identify trims easily, but also to select trims when you are creating a new product. I hope this would be a fun 
an interesting assignment for all of you. With this, we come to the end of this particular unit. In this unit, we have discussed the fashion trims that are used on both garments and accessories. We have looked at various categories of trims. We have seen how trims can be divided into sewing, finishing, packing and decorative trims based on production stages. We have also looked at the classification of trims based on their application. We have tried to look at trims such as interlining and interfacing which are almost hidden from the eye. We have listed out types of ribbons and types of zippers too. We have learnt a little about buttons. We have understood what line size means. To recap, trims are extremely useful in adding value to your apparel or accessory. Choose them wisely. Choose them according to the design that you have in mind. The compatibility to the main material, the practicality and the kind of durability and performance that you want from the product. Trims chosen wisely will serve you well. It will help you establish a good connection with your consumer. It would set a benchmark for you and help in maintaining your brand identity. Thank you.